Hi, uh, in this video, I'd like to uh, compare between uh, two different types of conductors that we use them in overhead lines. Uh, the first one is the uh, conventional aluminum conductor steel reinforced, or for short, we call it ACSR. This is the conventional type, and a new or relatively new types of conductors, they are classified as high temperature low sag, or for short, HTLS conductors. So what is the pros and cons of uh, using the, this new type of uh, material over ACSR, this is what I'd like to discuss in this short video. Uh, to start with, uh, around 80% of the conductors used in overhead lines are basically ACSR conductors. So if when you look here to the schematic, basically, these are strands. So the outside layers here, we have two layers, 30 conductors. This is for aluminum. This is for actually to conduct the electricity. So the aluminum is to conduct the electricity. In the middle or in the core, we have the steel. And the steel, this is to give the mechanical strength of the uh, of the conductor. This is why you call it steel reinforced. So to give the mechanical strength to the to the conductor. Uh, now, they can operate continuously at a temperature up to 100 degrees centigrade. This is when you count both the ambient temperature and the temperature rise of the of the conductor. So they can work satisfactorily up to 100 degree. Now, if you exceed the current, the temperature will be more and this will result in line dropping uh, beneath certain safe limits. And uh, this will limit the use of the of the conductor. So if I want to increase the load, I have to watch for the for the sag of the conductors because of some safety and right of uh, safety issues and right off uh, of the way. Now, how to increase the power flow? Now, if I want to increase the power flow, and this is something very, very important. As you know, the load is continuously growing, so we need to supply the increased demand uh, in the cities, in the countries, uh, and, and so on. So how to deal with this is to construct new overhead lines. Okay, so for example, you uh, build a generation station, which is by its way, uh, I mean, it is another issue, but I will not talk about generation here. But again, if you build the generation station, you need still to move the power to the load centers. Okay, so you need transmission lines. Now, building in new uh, overhead lines has certain disadvantages, and this can be summarized as such. First of all, to get an approval, uh, this will take a time. Second, it's very hard nowadays to find uh, suitable corridors to install these overhead lines. The construction, even if you f manage to get the approval and you manage to uh, get the corridors, the construction will take very long time. And sometimes there is a need that you need to build the overhead lines very, very fast or supply to the power to some increasing load areas very, very fast. Finally, the cost is huge to build overhead lines from scratch is extremely expensive. OK, so what is the alternative? So we can we have another alternative instead of building new lines, which is first we could retention the conductors to enable higher current, but this is has certain limitations. How much extra current we can add? We can upgrade the conductor, it changed the conductor size to a bigger one, so it can carry more currents, and hence the I square R loss will be will be lost. But again, that has again another limitations because if you have more conductor or more conductor size, this will have more mechanical uh, load on the on the towers. So the towers may not be suitable. Then you will be forced to change the tower as well as if you are constructing a new line. The final solution, and this is that I'd like to talk about today, is to replace the conductor with a similar size conductor. So from the weight perspective, there is not much difference, but those currents, those conductors can carry much higher current. 
and they are called high temperature low sag. So they work at a higher temperature and at the same time they provide a low sag to uh, compensate for the problem that is we suffer from when you use ACSR conductors. Now, what are those conductors? What they are made of? So these conductors are, we, again, they have two main components. We have the aluminum strands for the conductivity purpose, but the core here is made from different materials to control, to give the strength, the mechanical strength, and also control the, the thermal, uh, thermal elongation. And these are two examples. Uh, one of them here, we have a metal a matrix core instead of the uh, the conventional uh, 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 steel, and the other one we have carbon uh, composite core as well. Now these HTLS conductors can operate at higher than 150 degree compared to the ACSR, and some of them they can work up to 250. So you increase, you can double the load using the same, and this is what I want to stress on, using the same conductor size, so you are not really investing in changing the, the towers. Now, if you look to, to this uh, diagram, this shows different types uh, or the sag of different types of HTLS conductors, ACCC, GAB, INVAR, ACC, AS, uh, sorry, ACCR, ACSS, and the finally ACSR, the conventional one, the red one. And here it shows that the, the, the sag as you increase the temperature. So you'll see here the worst one is the ACSR. It gives you the highest sag. So this is why we said we, we limit its uh, temperature or its operating temperature at 100 uh, degree. It will give you around 40 inches of, of sag. Okay. Now, if you use this as a criteria, you will see that the other conductors, they work at a much, much, much higher temperature at providing the same, the same sag. Okay, so all HDLS conductors can provide you with a much lower sag than the ACSR. So that is the main advantage of using the HDLS conductors. Now, this is this table compares both the current carrying capacity of different types of HTLS conductors versus the ACSR and the cost involved. Of course, there is a cost involved in terms of the conductors. So ACSS, for example, uh, it provides you double the current carrying capacity and the cost is 1.2 to 1.5 and this will make ACS ACSS is one of the most attractive solution uh, from the perspective of the material to be used from the HTLS conductors. Uh, and here you can see the table. There are different types, different technologies, different materials. And the material basically is the core material. What type of the core material that we are using to provide this sort of uh, thermal uh, protection against expansion. Another conductor, which is the ACCC as well, also it has almost the same uh, current carrying capacity with a relatively uh, lower cost than some uh, some of the other other solutions. Uh, here, I'd like to share with you a study case done. There are several study cases available in the internet, but this is one of them, uh, and this has happened uh, in India. So there, they have an existing 17.2 kilometer uh, overhead line. They want to upgrade it. And the voltage level was 130 kilovolt. And they want to see what are the different solutions that they can use to upgrade the line. OK, so that is uh, an actual technical study that happened. OK, so let's see how the utility will come up with that, with the decision to replace the conductors with the HTLS and what are the other solutions that they might have? OK, so what, one of them is to build another circuit. On existing towers, so use the existing tower, build another circuit. You see there are sometimes double circuit or even more than one circuit on the same tower. So build another one. There is a problem here. They found that the existing lattice structure were not designed to accommodate any additional circuit. So that solution cannot be. OK, how about if we construct a new parallel transmission line? So just build another line parallel to the existing one. Uh, 
this is will I mean because of the cost of the land, the right of the way, this is very, very expensive, so it's not really viable. So this is also out, out of the picture. Uh, replace the 310 kcm ACS core conductors with a higher capacity conventional conductor. So still you use an ACSR conductor, but with a higher capacity means higher size. Again, this will also require that the lattice structure of the tower to be replaced because of the existing or the additional structure loading if you upgrade the, the conductor. And also the thermal sag associated with this heavy conductor also is a concern. So this is out of the picture. So the final one is to replace existing ACSR with a commercially available HTLS. Now, when you select the HTLS conductor, there are some other uh, uh, there are factors post one 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 factor. Uh, sometimes they want uh, come the countries they want to uh, use uh, their local suppliers, or they prefer to use a conductor that they have a previous experience. So that will lead us to the main conclusion here that okay, if you want to upgrade the existing lines, HTLS is an option, or if you want to build a new line, then you should consider that using HTLS from the first place. Among all the other HTLS conductors so far, the ACSS and the ACCC are the most viable uh, and attractive solution because the relatively lower cost, higher capacity, and more important than that is the experience. This was just referred to utilities they like to use, especially using a new material. Usually utilities are very reluctant to try something totally new. So they prefer someone with has some experience and these two conductors, especially the ACSS, you will see in the literature, this is the most widely used conductor in the uh, HLS uh, category.